Hello everybody and welcome back to our JavaScript tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to talk about is functions. Now we're not going to get into too much detail with functions as I'm going to leave that till the next video. But what I want to do is illustrate to you how a function works on a very fundamental level using a basic example where we have two buttons, a button that says green and a button that says red. And when we press the green button, this text here will actually change to be green. And when we press the red button, this text here will actually change to be red. Now, how do we do that, right? So how do we make it when we press a button that we actually can change elements on the page? Well, that's where functions come in. Now, what is a function? Well, you can think of the definition of a function as a kind of piece of code or a block of code that does something. It might, you know, change some piece of information on the screen. It might take in a value and return to us some value. You can think about in mathematics when we have functions like f of x equals 5x, something like that, right? That function takes a value of x and returns to us a value of y. You can think of that as similar idea with programming functions, except they're capable of doing much more than just mathematical computations. Now, something to remember when we think about functions is that a function should do one thing and it should do that one thing very well. So whenever you're designing functions, um, just try to keep in mind and think about what is your function doing? Is it doing one thing or is it doing many things? And when I say one thing, I don't really mean, you know, one line of code. I mean, one overall operation, one overall function of your code is what it's performing. It's not, you know, messing around and doing a hundred different things inside of it. Okay. So how do we create a function? Well, to do it is actually pretty straightforward. We're going to type the word function. We're going to type a name. In this case, I'm actually going to do a basic example uh, before we get into the other one called add. And then we're going to put curly braces to denote where our function actually is. So what I've done here is said we're going to define a function called add and anything that goes inside of these curly braces is what's going to be inside of our function. Now, to give you a really basic example, what I'm going to do is just console.log add like this, and I'm going to call my function by doing this. Now, I know you guys have no idea what's going on right now if you've never seen functions before, but let me break it down for exactly what's happening here. This is our function block, right? So this is the name of our function add this block of code or any blocks of code for that matter that go inside of these curly braces will only happen when the function is run. So the function has to be run. We have to call the function and then whatever's inside of it will happen. So here, this is what we call our function call. And to call a function is really easy. All you do is type the name of it and then put two brackets at the end to say that you're calling it. So this is our function call. And essentially what's going to happen is when we're reading through our code, as soon as we hit this block, we're going to actually call this add function, which means anything inside of here is going to run. So let me illustrate that to you by just simply running and refreshing this page. Let me go to actually inspect element here. And you can see if we go to, uh, I got to find, where is this here? Console, we get add printed out to the screen when I called add. Now the great thing about functions is that we can call them a bunch of times. So let's do this. And you can see that now we have four ads popping up on the screen. So hopefully this is giving you an idea of why we might use them. Because say I wanted to print a sequence of, I don't know, add one, two, three like that. Well, rather than, you know, having to do this, say I want to do this exact sequence of ads a hundred times, rather than having to write 300 lines of code, what I would do is simply call add as many times as I want that to happen, right? So if I refresh this, now you can see we're getting all of these popping up and that is, you know, the basics of functions and why we use them so that we can reuse our code. So if you ever realize that you're writing very similar lines of code multiple times, maybe you just want to add them into a function and then you can just call that line of code once with one statement rather than writing it a bunch of times. Okay, so let's go into a little bit more of a uh, more advanced example here with add and I'm going to show you something called parameters and something called return statements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two parameters in here and I'm going to call them a and b and these are called parameters. Now what these kind of stand for is the information that I need to pass to my function. So this is the information that my function needs to be able to work to be able to perform some computation. Now in this instance, a and b are going to actually be two numbers that I'm going to add together. And what my function is going to do is take those two numbers, a and those num the other number b, add them together and return the result to wherever my function was being called. Now this might seem a bit confusing, but the examples are hopefully going to clear this up for you. So what I'm actually going to do in here is write a return statement. 
Now, a return statement is different from logging something. I'm not printing something to the console. I'm returning a value. And the value I'm going to return is A plus B. Now, I know everyone's confused. Well, we'll get through this. What I'm going to do is create a variable here. I'm going to call it X. And I'm going to set it equal to add. And here I'm going to do 5, 5. Now, we all know what 5 plus 5 is. We know that value is 10. So what's actually happening here is when I call add, I'm going to pass for the value a, the number five, and I'm going to pass for the number B or for the parameter B, the value five. Now what these are called are arguments. So these are parameters and these are arguments and you can obviously, you know, I can pass different arguments to them. I could say var y equals five plus seven, right? I can do any numbers I want. And this is the point of this is that it can take any two numbers and return to me the addition of those numbers. So let's simply log out these values. And I'm going to show you kind of how this works. So console.log, we have X and we have Y. So what's happening is when we say var x equals add 5, 5, what's going to happen is we're going to pass our values and then we're going to return the addition of those values. What this return is going to do is essentially say this line here that we've said add 5, 5 is going to be equal to whatever this return statement returns, which in this instance is 10, which means that x should be equal to the value 10. I know this might be confusing, but let's run this and see what we get. We get 10 and we get 12. So what happened was we passed our values, you know, something happened, this gets replaced with whatever was returned from that function. So which is 10, this one is getting replaced with 12. And then we can print those two values out and say, you know, this is 10, this is 12. Those are our answers and we're storing them in variable X and variable Y. That being said though, I don't need to store them in a variable. And sometimes I don't want to store the value. I just want to, you know, use the value. So what I can do is actually do something like, you know, 234 and like negative 98. Maybe let's pass that in here. And then I can log the result of that addition. So here, you know, we get our value 136. I'm not storing it in any value, but I can still show it because what happens is when I call this, the return statement is going to, whatever it returns, will replace this line. And then, you know, we can demonstrate that and show that on the screen. Okay, so I think that is the basics I've shown so far that you know, we can have a function that has parameters, we can have a function that doesn't have parameters, we can have one that has a return and we can have one that doesn't have a return. What about a function that has parameters, but doesn't have um, a return statement? Well, that's more than fine. I could do something like console.log a plus b. And then if now if I call my add function, and I do five, five, watch what's going to happen. So we're going to print the value 10. Why does this work? Well, same thing as before. We have our parameters a and b. What we've done is we've called add. Notice we're not printing anything down here, but what happens is inside of the function, we print the addition. So obviously that's going to work fine. And you know, that is how this works. Okay. But now how about some of the more cooler parts of functions that I want to get into and then finish in the rest of the video? How do we call a function from our HTML? Like I want to press this button and I want to call a function. How do I do that? Well, let me show you. So what I'm going to do is actually create a new function and I'm going to call this function red. And all I'm going to do right now is simply say console.log red. Now inside of my button tag, what I can actually do is set the function that I want to trigger when this button is pressed. And to do that, I simply say on click equals. And in this case, red. Now what this is defining is essentially when I click the button, I want to call the function, which is called red, which obviously is right here. So let's see this and see if this works. Give this a refresh. When I click red, you can see that red is printing out to the screen and notice, you know, obviously it's keeping track of however many times I've pressed it just to tell you that same output is showing up. And that is as easy as that is to do. If you want to call a function from your JavaScript, you literally just put it in quotation marks, whatever the name is um, inside of HTML, sorry and it will call that function. Now let's do the same thing for uh, blue or green or whatever I had. Okay, so let's call this green and let's do console.log green. And I keep forgetting my semicolons, but I guess I don't even need them anyways, but I just like to add them. So let's do on click equals green. Okay, so let's run this now, refresh. Green, red, green, red, green, 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 red, red, red. See, and that is exactly how this works.
and that is i mean pretty cool in my opinion now what you guys can do is have buttons and when you press them you can trigger some javascript which is just the start of the really cool things we're going to be able to do later in this series now what i said though was i don't want to just console.log i actually want to change you know this element i want to change hello well we actually we know how to do that right we know how to change maybe not the color right now if you haven't seen that um command but we know how to change the value of our h1 tag so how do we do that well let's do one in here document dot get element if i could type properly by id don't know what's going on with my keyboard here let's do header as our id and then we're going to do what is it dot inner html equals what should we do let's actually just make this red for now great now let's do the same thing i'm going to copy this to save us the pain of typing that again and let's put in green so i haven't changed the color yet what i'm actually going to be doing now is changing the value of this header tag to be either red or green when i press one of these buttons so let's see if this works or if i mess something up let's refresh when i click red you see it changes to red and when i hit green it changes to green and that is you know as easy as it is to do this now what if we want to change the color well i'm going to give this a shot because i always forget how to do this but i think it's something like dot style dot color and i'm pretty sure this will actually change our color to be either green or red although i don't really know but we'll give it a shot okay so let's run this fresh when i press this oh there we go our color is changing from red to green so to do that what i did was dot style dot color and change that to lowercase red and lowercase green so that is our basics of functions i know i've gone through a lot here i'm going to continue with functions and we're going to continue to see them as we go through this series so you guys should continue to understand them but if you have any questions as always leave them down below i think personally this is my favorite part of the series so far in terms of we can actually manipulate things on our page and you know we're changing colors we're triggering events from our javascript it's just it's cool and we're getting into some much more interesting things so with that being said if you guys enjoyed make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel down below and as always i will see you in another video